Hey guys, Shreesh here. So ever since the launch of the OnePlus 7 Pro, the high refresh rate displays kind of started getting a lot more mainstream. In fact, OnePlus did set a new trend for the smartphone industry. Now, yeah, OnePlus wasn't the first one to do that, but because of its popularity and brand value, people started liking these high refresh rate displays. Then came OnePlus 7T, Realme X2 Pro and other devices which quickly adapted to this high refresh rate trend. And now surprisingly enough, we have started to see these high refresh rate displays at a price of 14,000 or 15,000 as well. Now for general consumers who haven't really used these high refresh rate displays or even to some of consumers who have used these high re refresh rate displays, there has been a certain dilemma like is this 120 hertz display or this high refresh rate display trend really worth it or is the 60 hertz amoled better than 120 hertz ips lcd and there are a bunch of factors as well related to these high refresh rate displays so i'll try to break that down i'll just share some of my opinions on this thing and yeah, without any further ado let's get into this so starting off with oneplus 70 people were actually enjoying this a particular trend of high refresh rate displays people were like going crazy behind the high refresh rate displays and stuff but then came poco x2 just i guess one and a half month back and people were not really that much satisfied with this particular device and its smoothness more or less people were kind of neutral with the entire display thing i remember watching sir geeky ranjit's video where he said that he's kind of neutral because most games or most popular games these days don't really support 120 hertz uh, fps or 120 frames per second yet and 120 fps or high refresh rate displays they may be good but he's kind of very neutral about that and that's the point uh initially people were not really uh, looking at this particular point with this particular perspective but when so geeky ranjit said about that things started getting into perspective for most users. Like, yeah, when you hear it for the first time, why do you need a high refresh rate display when games don't really support this? And the argument comes basically from the point that gamers use high refresh rate displays when it comes to gaming or competitive gaming. If you look into the competitive gaming space on desktops, then you might see that they have got 144 Hertz monitors with them. And the reason is they want their gameplay to be as smooth as possible to give them an edge in gaming. But does the exact same thing apply to your smartphones? Well, I don't necessarily think like that. See, it's a really valid point that most games like PUBG or Call of Duty don't really support the 120 hertz or 120 fps smoothness yet but the difference between a competitive gamer who plays games on pc or a desktop and a person using a phone and who also wants to play games on his phone is that a pc gamer or a gamer or a professional gamer only uses his pc for the sake of gaming and that necessarily can't be said for a smartphone there's a reason why these are called smartphones and they have become so essential in our lives see you may even purchase a gaming phone like the rog phone 2 and other devices like that like the nubia red magic or black shark and you can go for those devices great devices these have got the high refresh rate displays and they can provide you great gaming as well but the thing with those phones as well is that you're not going to 24 7 use these phones for the sake of gaming eventually you are also going to use your phone for scrolling and general purposes and that's the whole point see if we look at competitive gaming or these pcs with high refresh rate monitors then the point here is to provide good gaming when it comes to you know competitive esports or you know general gaming but when it comes to smartphone it has two advantages to it firstly it improves your experience and second is better gaming while better gaming may not be a possibility just yet uh, right of the time i'm recording this video because pubg and call of duty don't really support the high fps yet by the way they are going to support the higher fps or high refresh rate displays soon enough uh, but uh, they're still in the beta stage so yeah i'm not sure how long it's gonna take but as of the time i'm recording this video yeah we may not be able to enjoy the gaming on these phones with high refresh rate displays at their full potential but just as i told it is designed to also refine your experience. I also remember one thing from MKBHD's video, uh, I guess it was a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra review video, where he mentioned that it has got a high refresh rate display, so it is going to provide you with that, you know, extra smoothness while scrolling, which you do for the 90% of the time on your phone. And that's where it all makes sense. See, 90% of the times uh, it's for most users, like everyone out there is not a gamer. And in those circumstances, the 120 hertz goodness or 90 hertz goodness or you know in general high refresh rate smoothness is going to provide you with a much better experience so honestly you cannot say that these high refresh rate displays are not worth it or they are totally useless because certain games don't really support high refresh rate yet but the 120 hertz smoothness on these budget devices especially 
is not really that much overwhelming as well and that is the reason why so geeky ranjit is kind of neutral about this entire high refresh rate point and not just him but there are multiple tech reviewers who kind of are pretty neutral about this entire point see with the high refresh rate displays there is an obvious disadvantage that is extra power consumption and just in case you are wondering these high refresh rate displays drain your phone's battery to a whole next level so yeah battery is definitely an issue see the issue here is not about the games not supporting it entirely uh the issue here is about the battery life on your smartphone see if a new piece of technology or if a new trend enters the smartphone market or any consumer market and if it has some sort of trade off then it better needs to make sure that it does a one hell of a job and yeah these high refresh rate displays do a great job they are providing you with a great great performance a great smoothness and your overall experience has been boosted to a whole another level but the trade off here is battery which is arguably the most important factor on your smartphone so yeah here the trade off is kind of a very major aspect and that's why some people kind of criticize the high refresh rate batteries on their phones so if you are going to criticize these high refresh rate displays with an argument of battery life then that makes much more sense than just the argument that modern games don't really support the higher frames per second yet so yeah these high refresh rate displays they provide you with better scrolling which you end up doing the most on your phone and i've seen a lot of people on twitter criticizing this thing like why do you need 90 hertz for scrolling see that is the thing it makes your experience much better and unless and until you experience this kind of thing you're not going to you know know much about it honestly speaking so now the question is is it always going to stay like this like a compromise with the battery life well there are just two possible solutions to this first one is providing a higher capacity battery which actually makes your phone more bulkier and heavier and kind of a little bit fat uh, which most people won't like so obviously the next solution is start introducing graphene in your phones but the graphene battery thing is kind of very far from where we are right now now there's also one more factor to the smoothness on your phone as well and that is animations now often i've seen that these phones with high refresh rate displays they don't really come with great animations which kind of sounds to me like not utilizing 100% of these displays i mean a prime example of this is 90 hertz on the color os 6 was not really that much good when i was using it on the uh, realme x2 pro but as soon as i switched to realme ui i mean that's a long story i'll tell you that some other day but when i switched to uh, realme ui it felt much much better and at that particular moment i started getting quite a lot obsessed with the realme x2 pro so when it comes to the poco x2 this phone is running on miui 11 which doesn't necessarily have great animations in my opinion like i've been using this and it it has great animations but i think that it can be improved so the 120 hertz display on this phone kind of seems a little bit underwhelming at times especially considering the fact that uh, there is some sort of serious stuttering issue with the poco x2 if you flood your phone with a lot of applications which most heavy users do so yeah along with the high refresh rate hardware capabilities of these phones there needs to also be proper optimization and good set of animations as well and now the question 60 hertz amoled or high refresh rate ips lcd now if you ask for my opinion then i would say 60 hertz amoled mainly because amoled kind of gives you the best of both worlds first one being excellent battery life because amoled displays tend to turn off the pixels when the uh, phone is in dark mode or a black mode or if you are kind of having a black wallpaper then it is going to save a whole lot of battery on your phone and secondly the color levels the saturation levels the viewing angles the contrast the you know overall punchier feel that these amoled displays have it's actually unparalleled on the other hand the high refresh rate ips lcd panel on the poco x2 uh, it is a clear compromise when it comes to battery life and secondly yeah it kind of is pretty color accurate the display panel within itself is pretty good and nice and everything is good but it can never match the color levels on an amoled display panel amoleds are quite a lot superior than these ips lcd panels and that's one of the reasons why you are actually seeing these ips lcd panels with 120 hertz refresh rates or 90 hertz refresh rate in the budget segment see from a brand's perspective they just want to cut down the cost and cut down the corners so that they can earn maximum profit on their product and that's what happens if you add an amoled display panel to your phone then the cost definitely goes way up and that kind of results in a struggling margin on each phone so that is the reason companies go with these ips lcd panels now in 2020 if you just provide with an ips lcd panel then people are going to criticize you because samsung and realme have been providing amoled display panels on their budget phones so that is the reason to compensate that 
companies have started providing high refresh rate displays so yeah, overall i do feel that 90 hertz or 120 hertz on the smartphone displays is a great thing and it definitely boosts up your overall smartphone experience to a tremendous extent but it should be done in a very good way like proper optimizations proper animations good care of battery life and along with that a good quality panel as well now while we may not be able to see a high refresh rate AMOLED display panel uh, in the budget segment anytime soon but yeah still these IPS LCD panels are very great they are going to definitely bump up your experience quite a lot and don't worry about the factor that games don't support 120 hertz yet or 120 fps or 90 fps yet it is eventually going to come to you i mean these games will start supporting high refresh rate displays soon enough but also one thing to note is that do not prioritize a high refresh rate display in your smartphone buying list if that is something that you're doing right now then you're probably wrong that at that and this is something that i can say only for the budget segment when you go higher up on your budget let's say 30,000 or 35,000 plus then the story is entirely different because there you get kind of a very good performance very good optimizations and all of the other stuff but when it comes to budget segment i would only say that do not prioritize the higher refresh rate display just yet even for gaming because eventually the processors that are used in these budget phones they are not going to pull out uh, constant 120 fps or 90 fps on most games so yeah guys that's it for this particular video i hope this video helped you in some way or the other if it did be sure to leave a like drop a comment subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching